good to make it like make it clear on who we are. So um, my name is Ivan, as I said earlier, um, I'm in grade eight and um, as well as Gary, Gary is in grade eight as well. So that's just a little bit about us. Um, I like I like to swim and Gary, if you wanna say something about yourself. I like to read a lot. I really enjoy reading. Uh, I feel like reading is very fun and if you, you can get really immersed into reading. So I hope you all learned something from today's lesson. So Ivan, why don't you take it away? Okay, let's start. Um, so actually before we do that, um, it's um, it would be great if we could know your grade. So um, maybe like since we already know Olivia and Mason's grade, um, let's start with um, Sam. Sam, would you like to let us know what grade you're in? Wait, me? Yes, you, yes. Bro, bro, I'm not even a part of the lesson. I don't it's know fine. why. I just want to hear your grade. Um, I'm in grade seven. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yo, Gary, it's me, Rocky. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good to know. Here. Um, okay, and uh, Josie, um, what would be, if that's your name, or just let us know your name, if not. Um, also, your grade, please. Uh, Ivan, why don't you just take it away? With your hi, hi, yes, the, I'm Josie. Yes, I'm a, I'm a parent of uh, Rocky. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, aside from that, I think it's it's a good time for us to start now. Um, so for for today, our learning goals. Um, so our goals are to be able to tell the events of a story, um, to be able to describe characters in a story, and to be able to find the setting of a story. So we want to be able to um, identify um, different parts and um, different um, sections of a story in order to be able to further understand it and be able to um, further immerse ourselves into a story. Yes. So before we begin, uh, does anyone know what a story is? Olivia, Mason, do you guys know uh, what a story is or parts of a story? Yes. Uh, what do you know about stories in general? Stories have nonfiction and fiction stuff. And they can tell you the main characters and the settings. And the oh, middle and the ending. That is really good. Good job. Uh, yeah, so uh, just like Olivia and Mason said, a story is a fictional or non-fictional event or time period. It, it can be told by real or imaginary people, animals, or things. So good job, Olivia and Mason. And yeah. So uh, stories make us connect, and stories allow us to connect with ourselves. Because um, let's say, for example, um, you have uh, a Batman vs. Joker, let's say. You guys know who Batman and Joker are, right? So let's say Batman going against Joker. You can connect with uh, Batman. You can connect with how he is feeling in this case. So it really allows this strong connection between Batman and uh, you. And as well as you can connect with others. Like uh, you've read this really great book. You can read it to other people. And uh, you can... Uh, connect with them and tell them all about it. So what is the purpose of a story and why do you write one? Uh, 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 anyone at all? All right, um, so for those that don't know, uh, story, the purpose of a story is to convince, inform, entertain, explain, or describe something. So uh, the author might have a different reason, but mostly these uh, 
five reasons why they would write a story. Usually they write one to try and convince us into something, inform us about something, entertain us about something, explain something to us, and or describe something to us. So authors write because they want us to experience what the characters inside the story is feeling. You ever get that one time where you're reading that story and you're really immersed into it and you're like, oh yeah, I can feel Batman. I hope Batman wins this battle. You ever feel like that? So that is exactly what the author is trying to do. They're trying to bring you into story and hope you enjoy it. And we read the stories because stories can help us learn and grow because uh, we can learn from these characters, perhaps to be braver or to be bolder. And uh, it, it can help us dev develop with our brain and uh, become more mature as well as it can help us with our feelings, our languages and our confidence, which we have, so. Yeah, also to, um, to add to that point, um, if we could go back to the last slide, um, if not, it's fine. Um, I think the purpose of stories and how stories have been used um, in, in the past and in history um, is to basically share um, events that have been happening and share um, rules or um, norms of a society. So um, that's how stories have been used furthermore. Um, and moving on to where stories are found. So where are stories found? Um, so stories, um, contrary to some beliefs of people, um, they don't need to be from a book or from something physical, um, something physical that you're holding, such as like a magazine or a journal. Um, these stories can be passed orally through people or visually through um, videos on YouTube, um, through TV shows, through, um, through just infomercials. Um, videos can spread stories um, as well as people who share stories about their past. And these can come in, like overall stories can come in written or um, verbal forms, and they can be from a book or not from a book. So now you may ask, uh, why should we read books, right? Uh, we've told you about what they can do, but why should you read a book? Well. Uh, reading is like food for your brain. You know, we all have to eat food. And just like how we have to eat food, the brain also has to eat food. And the way the brain actually eats is that it digests these words and these new uh, words and phrases. It's learning from the books uh, and to feed it, to make sure it is full. And by doing this, it can make us smarter and have uh, better word choices to use when communicating with other people as well as uh, stories are able to inspire us in certain ways. For example, with the Batman vs. Joker case, you can be inspired by Batman and his bold actions to fight against the Joker. So it can inspire us to do things we thought we would never be able to do before. And it also helps with focusing because you're sitting there and you're just reading a book and you're not caring about anything else. You're just sitting there and reading the book. And this helps you focus and helps your brain um, helps your brain digest and uh, manage to do it. And so in the future, you can do it for longer and longer. And it really helps with focusing. And finally, the most important thing is that it helps with memory. Because when you read a book, you have to know what you read about. So you have to memorize or get a general understanding of what you've read, which helps, uh, which helps you in the future and also helps you uh, allow you to understand what a book is about. And this isn't just the case with books. This can also help with other cases such as memorizing different colors. And this is all thanks to the memory which, you, uh, which has been improved upon because of reading. So does anyone know the parts of a story? Olivia Mason, do you guys know any parts of a story? Uh, the main part. Very good. Uh, do you guys know any other parts? Uh, the beginning and the end. Good job. Good job. 
All right, so just like Olivia and Mason said, there's three parts to the story. There's the beginning, which is where it starts going up. You know, you're getting all the characters, you're getting the setting. It's like the introduction. You're getting what is happening in the story. And while it's going up, you get the middle of the story, which is what is happening. The biggest and most dangerous uh, actions are happening. That is the middle of the story. That is where it is all taking place. And finally, you get the end of the story where it's uh, a resolution. So let's say, for example, uh, we'll take uh, we'll take a Superman vs. Batman example. At the beginning, you get introduced to Batman. You get introduced to Superman. You get introduced, perhaps, there in a park. This is the beginning of the story that you understand about. And while going up, perhaps you learn that Batman and Superman don't really like each other, and they're getting angry at each other because one of them stole the other person's item. So they're starting to have a fight. That's the middle of the story. That is where all the action is happening. And then perhaps at the end, Batman says sorry and gives the item back to Superman and the conflict is resolved. That is the end of the story. And that is where it um, ends. And uh, stories is actually like a hamburger or a sandwich. Uh, you have the beginning, which is the first bun. And then you have the middle, which is all the juicy meat or lettuce or tomatoes in the middle. And then you have the end, which is the bottom bun. But wait, that's not all. There's more. So um, this is what you guys, um, what is it? This is like a very common um, plot diagram. Um, it's um, shaped as a pyramid. So that's a way you can remember it. So at the bottom or in the beginning, um, the exposition is where the characters and the setting is introduced. Um, this is where any background information from about the characters and the setting that may be re relevant um, for the story and allow you to understand the story more. This is where um, it's proposed, where it's um, shown to you and given to you. Um, in the rising action, this is um, when the character um, faces a series of conflicts. This is when um, the story is moving along and building up towards the climax. Um, the climax generally in this um, form of a plot diagram is the most interesting part of the story. Um, here we learn, um, we start to learn or uncover the outcome of the story and the, the problem or main conflict starts to um, become, starts to have a resolution in sight. And during the following action, um, this is where kind of things are slowing down. Generally, um, the story is kind of coming to a close. Um, and it's leading to the end of the story. And the problem um, is basically becoming solved. And in the resolution at, that, at this point, um, we know that the problem has been solved. And um, here it's the end of the story. Any um, closing remarks or any information that the, uh, any ending information that the author is gonna give you will be present here. And that concludes um, the story. So um, why is the setting important? Does um, anyone know Olivia and Mason or Rock, Rocky? A setting is a place that where the character lives or uh, walks on. For example, a side place like a park, a person walks on it and it's like kind of a background. Yeah, very good. It's, um, next, next slide, please. Um, it's indeed um, kind of, as you said, a background. It's, um, it could be interpreted in that way. So a setting is important because um, it, this is, um, the setting is normally presented in the b beginning of the story and it's normally shown there. And it basically shows um, the place of where the characters are, um, the time when they're there, because that's very important, because um, the story of Batman would be completely differently inter um, interpreted differently if they, were, um, if they were way into the future or way into the past in, in medieval times. So um, the time is important, as well as the environment. Um, what's around them? Um, the people, the places, um, like the like how they 
the the feeling how how things feel around them so that's important as well and it also the setting also helps the reader understand like where the story is taking place that's summing up the first points that i had earlier and because of that it helps the reader become more immersed into the story so therefore because they know what's happening when it's happening how it's happening um in terms of um the setting the reader um may feel like he or she or they um are more like enjoying the story because um they're really into it and they're really and um em empathizing with the characters and how they feel so that's important now you may ask what are the characters of a story um let's give sam a try sam do you know what the characters of a story are Uh, Sam, are you there? <laughs> Olivia, how about Olivia, Mason? Uh, Mason, why don't you give it a try, Mason? Do you know what the characters are, Mason? Yeah. What are the characters of a story? What do they do? Characters are basically people, and they describe the story like uh, a person is camping, in a forest and a character is a person like a human being well good job so yeah just like uh olivia and mason said uh characters are uh the main i guess uh uh object objects or people in the story uh note that characters there's a big misunderstanding that characters have to be a people in this case, characters don't have to always be a person, but they can be a person. So, for example, uh, characters are, let's say, a person, which could be Batman or Superman. Uh, it can be an animal, which is Curious George or Winnie the Pooh. They also count as characters as well. And it can also be a thing. Perhaps it's the life of a book or uh, what a pencil does all day. So these three can all be uh, a character. It doesn't always have to be a person who is the character in the story. And characters can do uh, four main things. So they can think like, uh, for example, Curious George can think. That's why his name is Curious George because he can think and he sees things and he's like, I wonder how this works. So he thinks about it. And that's why, uh, that's what a character does. And they also react. Uh, if a character uh, accidentally walked into a nail, they're going to start screaming and crying because the nails are very sharp and it, uh, it hit them. So they're going to react to the nail and they can also feel things just like reacting. They can feel if something is touching them or something is bothering them. And finally, uh, they can narrate and they can uh, communicate. So uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes, exactly, Olivia and Mason. It is. It can also be an action they take. So, uh, yeah, uh, a character can also take an action, which uh, basically uh, allows them to do something. And the actions that good job, very good job, Olivia. The actions that they take help drive the story and make it um, make it what it is. Uh, you can unmute Olivia and ask your question if you have one. What do you mean by um, actions or a noun? Like, do you mean the characters, are they an action? Or what do you mean what they do is an action or a noun? Uh, yeah, like pretend they're screaming. That is action, like a person running. Uh, yeah, that's an action they do. It, it's an action that they have to take. And these actions, uh, just like I said before, help drive the story and make it what it is. So yeah, it's an action. But uh, at the same time, uh, like running or screaming, they count as a verb, but they can also in a story count as an action. So why are characters important? So characters are important because they can help drive the story. They can help create and plot the story. 
They help the readers experience the world. They're very unique and they help us understand the situation. So let's go through these one by one. So characters help drive the story. Just like Olivia and Mason said, these characters help uh, perform these actions and these actions drive the story. And let's say Superman shoots a laser beam at Batman. That's an action and it helps drive the story because Batman is gonna get mad back and they're gonna fight. And they can also create and plot the story. Uh, if Batman shoots uh, Superman with a laser beam, uh, uh, Superman is going to fight back. And this is the plot of the story. Perhaps they're having an argument, which is uh, helping create the story. Uh, characters can, uh, readers can experience what the world and the characters feel like. Just like how perhaps you're reading the book and you really want Batman to win. You can experience how uh, tough this fight is and how Batman is trying his best to win this. Um, and how each character is very unique. You see a lot of characters in a story. Each one is not, it, it's never the same as the ones before, as they are always more unique and more separate uh, than, the diff, uh, than the other ones. So just like how Batman is extremely unique to Superman. Superman is tough and he's brave and he's, he's like the symbol of light. While Batman, he's dark. He doesn't like to talk with a lot of people. He fights. He only wants to fight crime. So each of these characters are very unique and very special in a story. And how about Ivan? You explain us to the last one. So the last point, they help us understand the situation. So um, the character is able to describe what is happening around them, or they're able to, the author is able to write in a way um, that experience um, that shows us how they're feeling or what they're doing and we can um, interpret um, and infer what's happening and their character traits um, how for example if the um, if the author says um, he the the character was a king for example we might be able to infer that he um, wears a crown um, and um, um, if like the author doesn't necessarily give us any um, information about his, the king's appearance, that's something we can infer. And um, something that ties onto this, um, the idea of characters is character development. So throughout, um, throughout a story, in many instances, the characters um, are unique as well as the fact that they develop throughout the story and from story to story, if it's a series. Um, so for example, um, in a book, in the be beginning, the story and the character rather, um, could be really shy, really, really um, afraid of doing things, not very outgoing, but throughout the story from his or her or their experiences um, in the story, what's happened, what's, what they felt what's around them. Um, they are able to develop throughout the story and become kind of be the same character, but change on the inside. But it could be on the outside as well. But um, usually, um, well, in my example, it's on the inside because by the end of the story, the character um, I was talking about, they could be really like um, outgoing, um, happy, they're like not sh very shy, they um, like to talk to people. So based on their, um, my character's experiences, um, um, he or she or they have developed to be that way. Next, next slide, please. Uh, so Olivia and Mason, do you guys have any questions? Because if you do, Ivan will answer them. No. Great, let's move on to the conflict. So um, would anyone like to um, answer the question of what is conflict? Olivia, Mason, no, okay. So a conflict is in a story, um, a conflict is when a character goes against something else. So in terms of the plot diagram in that was shown earlier, the pyramid you guys saw, um, the climax, um, there's a climax at the top and 
that is kind of like um, before the climax, um, the risk, the problem is kind of provided and given to you. The climax would normally be the kind of more most exciting peak point of the um, of the story, and close to the climax or after it, when we're in the um, kind of the downfall of the pyramid, um, that is when the characters' problems are beginning to be solved or are being resolved. So the climax is normally referred to as kind of a turning point in the story. Okay, so um, there are kind of six general um, general types of characters, of conflict, sorry, in a story. So um, first of all, there's character vs. character. So in, in this type of conflict, the character is going against another character, for example, um, Batman going against the Joker. Um, quite simple. Um, second type of conflict um, gets a bit more um, challenging, a bit more, a bit more kind of interesting. Yes. Um, so it's be, uh, the character versus self. So this is where a character is kind of fighting against um, their self, their selves. Um, rather, um, they could be fighting in about something internally. They, for example, like they're fighting against themselves when they can't decide if they want to get ice cream or um, or candy, for example, or yeah. And the third third type of um, conflict is character vs nature. So as the name implies, it's basically when a character is forced, um, is fighting against nature. So basically anything that is natural in the world um, or in the world they're living in, as, such as a natural disaster, for example, an earthquake, a uh, volcanic eruption. Um, and then the fourth type of conflict in the story is character versus super, um, supernatural. So a, um, a supernatural being would be um, a ghost, um, a made up creature, uh, an ill, um, yeah, some, the simplest example would be a ghost. So basically the character is going against something that may, may not exist as of what we know now. So the fifth um, type of conflict would be character vs technology. So for example, this character um, could be going against technology um, such as a character fighting it against fighting against a, a piece of a, an AI robot um, that is able to think by its own, um, make its own decisions. So they might be having a race to see who can build a house the fastest. Um, so that's an example of that. And could we go back please? Okay, so the sixth um, type, sixth, type of conflict in a story, that would be character via society. So um, that would be the character going against um, a kind of like a norm in society or um, something that many people in the society believe in. Um, so as of now, do we have any questions? Anything or anything that you would like to point out? Anything that you would like to add? Any observations you have? No, okay. Um, okay, we can move on now. All right, so um, what is a point of view and why is it important? Olivia Mason, uh, David, uh, do any of you guys know? Uh, do you guys have anything, uh, do you guys know about it? Olivia Mason, do you guys know any? If not, it's fine. Nope, all right, sounds good. So here we go. Uh, well, a point of view. So a point of view is 
who is telling the story. So we've seen stories where perhaps it's the person themselves. They can write stuff like, I went downstairs and I went into the bus. And that's uh, a type of point of view. And um, before we get into those, um, I would like to point out two very common points of view. So now that we know a point of view is basically, it's telling us who is uh, explaining the story and who is telling us how the story is going. So uh, the two most common types of views are first person and third person. So just like I mentioned earlier, first person is when the character itself is talking about uh, the story. So in this case, um, uh, to add on to the points of view, a point of view can also be uh, how the character sees something. So how the character reacts or how the character feels towards something in their own uh, shoes or how, yeah. So uh, anyways, back to first person. So first person is basically um, when the person themselves is talking and explaining the story. So just like I said earlier, I went downstairs, I went in the bus, I went to school. That's all part of the first person using the word I because it's themselves. So I went to school, I ate food. So that's first person. And you also have third person. So third person is when instead of it being the person themselves, it's this, um, it's this super big or let's pretend a powerful monster who's telling the story for you and making the events happen. So they can see what is happening down below on what uh, these um, characters. So for example, uh, John, let's call our first person uh, John. And if it was in third person, then it'd be instead of I went downstairs, it'd be John went downstairs. So the comparison is if it was first person, it'd be I went downstairs, I ate food compared to third person, which would be John went downstairs, John grabbed a plate and ate some food. So that is the difference between those two. And before we continue, does Olivia, Mason, David, do you guys have any questions? Questions, comments, concerns? You can write it into the chat if you have any questions about points of views. All right, so no, all right. So then as we continue, um, it is important. So now you may ask why is point of views important, right? Cause we've explained point of view to you. Now you may think, yeah, okay. And how do they help us? Well, they help us because it helps the reader, which uh, perhaps is uh, the person reading the book, uh, the perspective they're looking at. So um, it helps, let's say there's, you're watching a movie, for example, or reading a book about Superman vs. Batman. You can realize and identify, oh, it's third person because the, per the way they're saying it is not, I fought against Superman, it's Batman fought against Superman. So it helps you realize what type of view you are looking at. And once again, the points of views, the difference, the biggest tip I can give you guys to identify which one is which is first person will always use I to describe things they're doing, while third person will use names and uh, uh, use names and describe their actions instead of using the word I. So it doesn't always have to use the word I, but mostly it does. And so it helps the readers understand the following of a character because it helps them understand their feelings, their thoughts, their motivations, and their experiences. So it helps us realize what they're feeling because they can say, I feel sad today, which helps us understand, oh, he feels sad, or John feels sad today. Or it can also help with, John is thinking uh, he wants to get some hamburgers or I was thinking I want some hamburgers. So it helps with the thoughts as well, as well as motivation. So what the word motivation means, it means what they want to do and uh, what like what do they want to achieve? Or let's say, for example, for uh, example, for motivation, uh, John wants to grab a hamburger. He wants to achieve the goal of grabbing this hamburger. So that's what the word motivation means. And finally, you have the word experience. Experience is um, how much, uh, how much, um, how much of one thing they did in the past that has gathered up 
and now they're getting better and get better at it. So an example of experiences is John was um, John was reading every day. So he'll definitely get better and better at it. And he'll have experience from reading. So Olivia, Mason, David, do you guys have any questions? You can uh, unmute yourself or you can type in the chat. If not, we'll move on to a video. All right, sounds good. So uh, here we have you, uh, hold on, sorry. Yeah, here we have a little video. Uh, um, I kind of would like to add on to the experiences point of Gary. So that's basically um, what a character comes in contact to um, throughout the story or throughout their lives. So that's just something to add on. And now onto a fun um, video about point of views. So if I didn't do a good job explaining it, or if you still have something that you're confused about, uh, here is a little video I would like to show you guys about a uh, different point of view. So, sorry, give it a second. Here we go. The point of view of a peak. Uh, hold on. Can you guys hear it? Or let me know if you guys can hear it. Can you guys hear it? Yeah, we can hear it. All right, sounds good. So literature is the voice that is telling the story. Some stories are told by a narrator. A narrator is a speaker who is not a character in the story. A narrator can tell the thoughts, feelings, and actions of all the characters. Stories that do not have a narrator are told from the point of view of one of the characters. So that's first the person. The only understands feelings and events occurring from that character's perspective. Listen to this story being told by a narrator. Think about how each character feels. So a narrator is third person. Sound mouse. Field mouse had a friend who lived in a house in town. He invited the town mouse to dinner. Out he came and sat down to a meal of corn and wheat. My friend, said town mouse, you have so little here. I have all kinds of things at home. Come and enjoy them. So the two set off for town. There the town mouse showed his beans, grains, cheeses, fruit, and honey. As the field mouse ate, drank, and was merry, he thought how rich his friend was and how poor he was himself. However, as they ate, a man suddenly opened the door. The mice were so afraid that they ran into a crack. Then, when they wanted some figs, in came a maid to fetch something. When they saw her, they hid in a hole. Finally, Field Mouse could eat no more. He told Town Mouse, do as you like, my friend. Eat all you want. Have your fill of good things, but you are always in fear of your life. As for me, a poor mouse with only corn and wheat, I will live at home without fear of anyone. How does town mouse feel? He thinks that field mouse lives a poor life. He enjoys the things he has in town. At first, Field Mouse agrees that Town Mouse is rich compared to him. However, with so many people around, the mice are always afraid of being caught. Field Mouse soon realizes that being poor and living without fear is better than having many things, but always being afraid for your life. Imagine how Field Mouse might retell this story from his perspective. He would feel that town is too scary. He prefers his safe home. The food is not worth the danger. However, Town Mouse might tell the story differently. He thinks the field is dull and life is much better in town. Having riches is worth the danger. If told from Town Mouse's point of view, the story would likely end this way. So Field Mouse went back home to live his poor life. How sorry I feel for him. He'll miss out on all this lovely food. I may need to hide now and then, but at least I have some excitement. This fine life is worth the risk. A story's mood and the events that take place in a story have a lot to do with the point of view of the character telling the story. 
How might one of your favorite stories change if told by a different character? All right, so uh, do, you have any, do you, any of you guys have any questions? Uh, write it in the chat. Uh, or you could just unmute as well. Yeah, or you can just unmute if you have a question. So uh, if you don't, just make sure to write note and then uh, we'll understand. All right, sounds good. So Ivan, why don't you explain the next thing that is happening? Um, yeah, that's great. So we'll kind of, um, now we'll move on if you could switch to the next slide. Um, we'll move on to a fun activity for you guys. So here we're gonna listen to someone reading a, a narrator or yeah, a narrator reading a book. And then we'll see if we can, if you guys can identify the different parts of the story. So the different parts would be um, kind of the exposition, the rising action, the beginning, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. So yeah, let's watch the video. Sorry, I forgot I was uh, muted, my bad. I love listening to stories, don't you? I'm Mimi and I tell stories. The Selfish Crocodile by Forston Charles and illustrated by Michael Terry. Deep in the forest, in the river, lived a large crocodile. He was a very selfish crocodile. He didn't want any other creature to drink or bathe in the river. He thought it was his river. Every day he shouted to the creatures of the forest, stay away from my river. It's my river. If you come in my river, I'll eat you all. So there were no fish, no tadpoles, no frogs, no crabs, no crayfish in the river. All were afraid of the selfish crocodile. The forest creatures kept away from the river as well. Whenever they were thirsty, they went for miles to drink in other rivers and streams. Every day, the crocodile lay on his great big back in the sun, picking his big sharp teeth with a stick. But early one morning, the forest was awakened by a loud groaning sound. Something was in terrible pain. The creatures thought that it was an animal caught by the crocodile. But as the sun came out brightly, they saw it was the crocodile who was in pain. He was lying on his big back, holding his swollen jaw, and he was crying real tears. The creatures drew closer, but not too close. Some of the creatures felt sorry for the crocodile. What's the matter with him? asked a deer. I don't know, said a squirrel. Maybe he's going to die, chirped a bird. If that happens, it'll be safe to go in the river, grunted a wild pig. The animals thought about this. They hung from branches, they hung from vines, they buzzed in the air and they shook their heads as they watched the great big crocodile in pain. No animal tried to help. Suddenly, a little mouse appeared, sniffing in the air. He ran along the crocodile's tail and then onto his tummy. The other creatures stared. Look at that mouse, chattered a monkey. He's either very brave or mad. He's going to be eaten for sure, said an iguana. The mouse crept along the crocodile's big neck and into his open mouth. There was a hush in the forest. The mouse got hold of something and pulled and pulled and pulled. 
Then he put it on his shoulder and walked out of the crocodile's mouth. There was a loud cheer from the astonished creatures. The crocodile sat up and said, I don't feel any more pain. It's all gone. Then he saw the mouse walking down his tummy, carrying an enormous crocodile tooth on his shoulder. Your bad tooth was giving you the toothache, answered the mouse, turning round to face the non-smiling crocodile. Do you want it back? Oh, no, no, no. Get rid of it. And when you've done that, come back. I'll have a present for you. The mouse went and buried the bad tooth under a tree, and when he returned, the crocodile had a nice juicy nut waiting for him. As the crocodile watched the mouse eating the nut, he said to him, You were very clever getting rid of my toothache, and kind too. I am so grateful. But what shall I do if my toothache comes back? Don't worry. I'll help you take care of your teeth, answered the mouse, nibbling. Soon the crocodile and the mouse were the best of friends. And one day the crocodile sent all the animals an invitation. Please come to drink and bathe in the river. I won't hurt you. The river belongs to us all, he said. The creatures weren't afraid to drink and bathe in the river anymore. Although the crocodile was sometimes snappy, they grew to love him. And soon the river was full of fish and tadpoles and crabs and crayfish. And that. So yeah, that's the video. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the story. Uh, I wow. want to take it away. Yeah. Great. So um, we'll have a little bit of a small discussion about this video. So first of all, if anyone would like to volunteer or know the answer to, um, can you identify the parts of the story? So we'll start with the first part. So the exposition, um, can anyone identify what happened in the very beginning when we're, when the story was described, what was happening, the characters as, as well as like the setting. So what does anybody know? David, Olivia, and Mason, would you like to, one of you guys, like what happened in the beginning? What was the setting? What was the character? What was kind of, um, what was happening in the beginning? In the beginning, there was a crocodile and he was selfish. Like he won't let the creatures drink the water and swim in the river. Yes, that's exactly correct. Very nice. Um, how about um, the, how about in the rising action, um, building up to the climax? Would any of you guys like to, do any of you guys know what happened in the rising action? Okay, so remember the rising action is when kind of the first problems are presented to us. So um, based on that, do you guys know what happened? Okay, so um, that is when the rising action is when the crocodile um, had a toothache. So moving on to the climax, when the, um, the immediate problem or the main problem, problem um, is being solved. So does anybody have any idea um, for the climax, what happened, where the immediate problem or the main problem was being solved? Um, does anyone know that, the, uh, know that the climax, it doesn't have to be bad. It can also be a good thing happening. So in one case is uh, a boy, he's having a stomach ache. He goes to the doctors and the doctors give him uh, some me medicine to eat. That could be the climax of a story. So with that in mind. It was better. So that would, the getting the medicine would be the climax and feeling better would kind of be the um, falling action or the resolution and leading up to the, leading into the resolution. 
So, I'll give you a Mason. Do you guys want to give it a try? It's fine if you guys get it wrong. It's fine. Uh, just give it a try. Okay, so I'll just I'll just tell you guys. So um, the climax would be in this case um, the immediate problem of the crocodile having a toothache for the um, rising action. Um, solving that toothache would be the climax. So the rat goes. Um, to the crocodile's ma mouth and um, get gets the bad tooth. That would be the climax in that um, in that area in the story. In the story. Um, so next we have falling action. Um, would anyone does anybody know what the falling action in the story would be? And if you guys have any questions at all up to this point, just let let us know, please. Um, David. Uh, or Olivia, Mason, um, do you guys know kind of the following action of the main problem of the of the story? Like when it's becoming like getting solved, the problem, the main problem of the story getting solved? The crocodile was like selfish and then <laughs> he was having a, a toothache and uh, like the the mouse or a rat uh, just came in the crocodile's mouth and uh, got the teeth out, and then the crocodile invited all the friend, all the creatures, and became friends again. So um, you're you're right, but like. Do you want to identify um, where the falling action would begin or where it is? Like, um, it's in between, just to give you a hint, it's in between the rat going into the mouth and the crocodile, like, happily staying with the friends in the river. Um, they were swimming? Um, close, but it's actually um, the crocodile, because after the, um, he, the crocodile's tooth gets pulled out by the rat, the, croc the um, falling action would be the crocodile being really happy and thanking the mouse because that is when um, the whole resolution of the, um, the whole solution of when, how like the crocodile is selfish and doesn't want anyone to go into the river. Um, that's kind of when the problem is being solved and when the crocodile is becoming more nice and allowing others to come in. So I kind of gave it away, but um, do you guys, would any of you guys want to kind of talk about the resolution or like the, when the, at the end, when the problem is solved? What, what part of the story was that? The end. Yes, but um, what happened? What, what happened there? Well, the crocodile was just selfish. Yeah, that's in the beginning. I mean, at the end. All the, the animals. The crocodile allowed all the creatures or animals in his river. Yes, that's exactly correct. And he, um, everyone um, was then, the crocodile was nice to everyone. Yeah, so you guys nailed, nailed that. Uh, so before we uh, end up, uh, end with the final slide and let you guys go, um, a quick summary of what we learned today. So we learned about why we should read books, how it benefits us. We learn characters and how they can develop and uh, affect a story. We learn about the setting and how it can also change the story through, uh, throughout the story, a uh, change throughout the story. Uh, we learn about the different types of conflicts and how these conflicts make the story more interesting. We learn about uh, we learn about the points of views. The first person using the I. I like food. I like water. The first person, and we learn about the third person, also known as the narrator, but it's also known as third person more commonly. And the third, the third person is using this uh, using uh, instead of I using John or Bob as the person's name and describing what is happening in the story rather than the person themselves telling it. So. Now Ivan will take it away with the last slide and let you guys go. Yeah, so this will be really quick, I promise. Um, so, right, um, so in the beginning of uh, our lesson next week, um, we'll actually go over everything we learned today. So 
um, you don't need to, to really like um, memorize everything we learned today, but it would be helpful or it would be good for your own learning if you could remember um, everything that um, most um, or like kind of the main parts of what we did today. So um, just to go around and kind of reflect on what we've done today. Um, so we'll start with Olivia. So what is one thing you learned today? About the... Story basics. Okay, great. So the parts of the story, is that what you mean? Yes. Great. Um, and is there anything specific that you would like to see done um, by us, Gary and I, to next week? So would you like to learn anything specific or are you curious about anything specific in terms of kind of reading or English? <laughs> If not, that's just totally fine. English. In, okay. Um, so I, is there anything specific about English that you would like to learn about or do you, or do you not have a preference? For example, like, do you want to learn how to like write a story or like more parts about a story? Like, what do you want to learn about more deeply? Writing story. Okay, that's good. Um, now, um, Mason, same questions, like, what is one thing you learned today, and is there something you want to see done next week? Uh, yes, like, the story basics, like, the story of the basics, like, characters, and, uh, the drawing. Like, the stories completely make sense. Um, and by drawing, do you, would you like to elaborate? Like, what do you mean by that? Like showing the picture what the character is doing. So is that like describing what the character is doing? Yeah. So you learned about how to how to do that through first and or third person, correct? Okay. Okay, great. Um, and um, so anyone anyone else? Like, is there something you want to share with us, what you learned today and what you would like to see done next week? No? Okay. Um, so, guys, thank you. Do you also want to learn about, like, story writing or, like, what, what else do you want to learn besides um, more about story oh, yeah. Mason, would you like to learn about story, like, how to write a story as well? Yeah, but I already know how to write a story. <sighs> Me okay. Neither. Yeah, that's totally fine, but it's, um, we'll see if we can find something more advanced to teach you guys, as you guys seem very, um, very confident in like, kind of understanding a story already, so. Good we'll job see. today, guys. Uh, yeah, we'll very good we'll job. We can do. Go ahead. Um, All right, you guys yeah. uh, can go now. So thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you guys, see you next week. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Nice job. Good job.